Welcome to JCTV Mid Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts across the state and uh, JCTV sponsored. Coming to you from the capital city of Jefferson City, Missouri, I'm your host, Rick Jay, with two very special guests today uh, artist Cindy Sneeders of Jefferson City, Missouri. She's serving as a spokesperson today for the Jefferson City Art Club, which is 114 years old now. And also artist Doug Freed. Uh, Doug will be representing his personal artwork, but also talking about, and you've probably heard of it, the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art uh, in Sedalia, Missouri. Both bring us an interesting uh, look at the role that they play uh, on the stage of Missouri's art. Thanks for being with us today. I first I'll ask you to join me in inviting uh, uh, Miss Cindy Sneeders uh, of Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, anything you'd like to share, uh, please do so. Uh, can you share with us when or how you were first in, uh, inspired to become an artist, Miss Sneeders? Sure, sure. When I was very young, um, I was probably extremely wiggly in the pew at church. And so my mother used to give me a piece of paper to write on the bulletin or whatever was handy. And she, she'd give me that in a pencil and I would draw everything that I saw in church. And of course she would encourage me to keep me from being wiggly, but then I realized that I enjoyed it. And several times throughout grade school and different times in my life when I would, wouldn't win awards, it just got to be something I just enjoyed doing. It was, it was always relaxing. Yes. Well, very good. That uh, sounds like she's inspired. Very, uh, very interesting to speak with you. I love your inspiration and attitude. Now we'd like to ask if you could share anything uh, about your life that uh, describes uh, Cindy Sneeders. Uh, I'm sure you have family. You might want to say a shout out to it. So kind of take us on a little trip of where things began for you. Um, well, I was raised in Jefferson City, went to West School, local grade school, oh, uh, mm -hmm. attended the public schools, went to uh, Warrensburg for my undergrad, Mizzou for my grad, mm -hmm. um, married, and I have two children. One um, is a graduate from Mizzou, and the other one is attending Mizzou oh, right now. Excellent. Um, then I uh, was able to acquire a job with Jefferson City Public Schools. So awesome. I taught with Jefferson City Public Schools for 27 years. 27 years, now that's a commitment. Right? <laughs> 27 years, yes. And um, when, I, when I retired, I still kind of miss that, something that's, it's, it's fun, it's exciting to introduce people to art that didn't think that they could do that or, or they want to just, just relax with art. So that's when um, I happened to meet my two co-workers, uh, Anda Rozier and Charlotte Middleton. And we decided to start an art studio or an art school. Right. And we did. Um, we are at, uh, the, it's called The Village on East McCarty. And anyone that's lived in Jefferson City for a long time, it used to be called Warwick Village. Yes. Uh -huh. And they're, they're cute little historic cottages put together. And we rented one cottage. Um, Anne uh, does homeschool, private lessons, and clay. She has a kiln and a couple of wheels. And then Charlotte does mixed media and private lessons and, and also uh, children that come in. And then I do, uh, ages six and up, painting with acrylics. And so it could be we have Saturday children's classes 
or we have Saturday or weekend, week long children's camps with different, all three of us will meet. And so they get to see all three of us on those times. And then I'll have adult in the evening sip and paint. I see. Classes that so, everybody uh, seems to enjoy. you continue to inspire. Now, is there anyone, back to family, is there anyone you'd like to say a hello to? This, as you know, is uh, uh, broadcast on YouTube, so it goes internationally. So if there's a, <laughs> a shout out that you'd like to give. It'd probably be to my family. I, I have a large family now okay. in Jefferson City, Great. so I don't want to leave anybody out. I understand. All right. Well, can you share with us, um, we talked about inspiration, and we talked a, a few moments ago about a, a lady uh, that's well known uh, and has been on the show before. I did a taping in her home in her studio, Miss Carol Norton. And I think you was uh, telling me that you was uh, really inspired by Carol at some point also. Well, when I, when I first started teaching, and like any young teacher, you know, you're ready for ideas. What, what can I do? Have you got some good ideas? How can, I, how can I make this work? Carol Norton was the one that I went to, and I spent the day at her house. You said you've been to her house also. Mm -hmm. I spent the day at her house, and she was so inspirational and, and really helped me to get started, gave me ideas, classroom management. I, I, she is my one. She's so my you're, one. you're now paying uh, it forward, I guess we could say, and that's really yes. commendable. Yes. Um, we didn't have our school teachers, and most of them are underpaid. Uh, it, um, it, it's just inspiring to meet someone that continues that spirit, knowing Carol Norton and that spirit that she has had with school teachers and the way she started out also being inspired by Carol Norton, our Carol Norton, uh, Ruth Hogan. We've talked about Miss Hogan in the past. Well, now to get into some more detail, um, can you share with us your favorite mediums and, and subject matter when you're working on a project? I'm, I'm usually most of your people say they like oils. I'm an acrylic and watercolor person. Oh, I, see. I, I really enjoy acrylics and watercolors, and I I like the fast dry where most people like the slower drying and, and working with it. I, I enjoy the faster dry and, and getting it to work through that way. Um, and uh, probably subject matter would be nature. Um, I would say things to do with nature are my, are my favorite okay. things to do, yes. Now we're going to uh, discuss some of your favorites. Uh -huh. in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and those will be up on screen uh, as uh, in the editing room as you talk about them. I first though want to turn um, uh, back to a question. Uh, do you have any projects now in process or at a venue for sure viewing? I, I know um, that you are the featured artist coming up soon uh, on the Jefferson City Art Club website mm -hmm. during the period of April 25th through June 6th. Mm -hmm. and that um, your co-worker Charlotte Middleton will be exhibiting, exhibiting at the Department of Motor Vehicle in, uh, at 1617 South Ridge in Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, so um, you also might, uh, I think you're an invited guest to the uh, Mid-Missouri Art News and Cons uh, Runge Conservation Nature Center mm -hmm. exhibit that's coming up uh, May through June 2018. You want to, do you have any highlights of what's happening in your art world? Um, well, you, you've just about said them all right there. But yes, mm -hmm. Charlotte and I will be exhibiting together. Charlotte and I are our co-workers. Okay. And um, we will be together at uh, the DMV. So I think it's going to be kind of a fun mix, my acrylics with her mixed media. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am looking forward to the Runge Center. I have a very large maple leaf yes, that, I, that will, it's floating in the water, that, that will be hung uh, at the I, Runge Center. I know. I'm looking forward to it, uh, to seeing that. Your work and also Charlotte's um, uh, work speaks for itself. Uh, so uh, I invite everyone to uh, put down these dates and time frames so you can uh, uh, take a look, take a peek at what's going on. Um, well, Cindy, you are currently a member of the Jefferson City Art Club. Uh, may I ask you if, uh, if the Jefferson City Art Club has inspired you in any way uh, or continues to, to inspire you? 
Yes, it does, yes. Well, for one thing, I get to see Carol, my, my person that, that I said who got me started yes. doing in, when I was teaching. But then also I really appreciate that they sponsor Sketch Day in Jefferson City. Yes. When I was young, I remember doing Sketch Day in the public schools and I it was a day that I'd always looked forward to I my favorite sketch that I did was um, the old library not the current library but the one that's next door um, and I I did it in one first place one year and I think that was another thing that that helped me to become an artist oh, and and now I can look back at the at the children that are, and they probably wouldn't like that, the, the high school students that are, yes, that are uh, putting their artwork, a few of yeah. them I've had in my class in grade school, and so I love to see them continuing with their art. So we want to make the connection for the viewers, and we talked about the Ruth Hogan children's exhibit, and um, Cindy is speaking about the school, it's actually the high school sketch day, so she can see that in her time frame and timeline of being a teacher and her st students that did uh, submit work at the Ruth Hogan in the elementary levels. Uh, she's now looking at a uh, high school, sketch day level in a high, at the high school. Um, well, your work is uh, appealing and unique, so I, I, I just really look forward to seeing it, some of it. We all seem to turn out work that becomes our favorites. Can you describe uh, what your favorites are? Um, one of my favorites, I have a mother elephant with her baby elephant. And uh, I like to work very large. So it is, it's, it's probably 30 by 40. Oh. I, I like large. And it, it's hard to tell in the picture, but it is. And, mm -hmm. and that is one of, one of my favorites. Um, the maple leaf floating on the water that we talked about. I, I enjoyed that. And, and now I'm starting to get a little more into, um, I want to try a few more um, impressionistic works. And so I'm just starting to get into just a little bit more of that. Oh, super. Well, for those interested in learning more about the Jefferson City Art Club, uh, please please give the JCAC uh, website a visit. That's www.jeffersoncityartclub-missouri, spelled out, dot com. Well, Ms. Sneeders, on behalf of the JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, I want to thank you for sharing uh, with us here, and um, we uh, really thank you. Do we, by any chance, have time to tell about upcoming news? Well, we sure don't. Uh, not at this okay. point. Uh, we've we've got in depth. <laughs> we'll have to. They'll have to look on the website. Then. Yes, please. That's okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. I've really enjoyed. Thank you it for having and me. Sharing uh, with the the viewers. After the break, we meet the well-known artist Doug Freed, of the uh, Dom Museum of Contemporary Art, in Sedalia, uh, who will surely inspire you to look deeper into his commitment uh, to the arts and uh, in the mid-Missouri area. Uh, we'll be right back. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool, really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. Yo, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those hands. Please don't say that. What? 
Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. Mm -hmm. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News. Um, today, I'm welcoming uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Doug Freed of Sedalia, Missouri, here on the program. Uh, he is uh, co-founder of the uh, Dom Museum of Contemporary Art and is well known for his art across the state and the United States for that matter. Doug has a lot to uh, share with you, so please join me in welcoming Mr. Doug Freed here to uh, JCTV at Mid-Missouri Art News. Well, well, Rick, I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you, sir. Well, if I may call you Doug uh, by your first name, uh, 15 minutes is really not a long enough uh, time to really share uh, everything about Doug. So we'll most likely have him back in the future for the spotlight on the arts. We'll put the spotlight on uh, Doug. Uh, but we'll try to cover the foundation, the highlight, uh, the experiences yeah. in your art world. Uh, if you could please tell us a little bit about the highlights of your life that best describe Doug Freed, if you okay. will. Well, I think I've been an artist since I was a very, very young child and was encouraged by all my teachers, you know, throughout yes. my mm -hmm. grade school and high school years and went to uh, college and, and received, you know, uh, undergraduate and, and a master's degree in art. Excellent. And mm -hmm. when I was 23 years old, I was brought to, uh, I was hired by State Fair Community College, which was a brand new college opening. Oh, I see. To come there and start up an art department. And then I did. And so I stayed there for 30 years in that, in that position. And I really was the chairman of the art department for all that time. And then, um, oh, I guess in 1999, uh, I formed with Harold F. Dom, the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art, which is on the campus of State Fair Community College. Yes. Uh -huh. And I stayed there and served in that position for a little, little over nine years, uh, including the years before it formally opened. Um, I was there a couple of years, you know, getting ready for the thing to open. Uh -huh. But uh, that, was, that was a wonderful experience. All during my life, so I guess for 50 plus years, I've been showing my work. and. Wow. Started out in the 1970s showing uh, in St. Louis and Kansas City. And by the end of the 70s, I added Chicago to that, to I my see. group of artists, mm -hmm. I mean galleries. And I had my first solo exhibition in New York City in 1979. Wow. And ended up showing there 20 years with the same gallery. And awesome. that yeah. was a wonderful, wonderful time in my life because the gallery was, a, was an important gallery in Soho and it was right across the street from Leo Castelli, Sana yes. Ben, oh. up the street from Mary, Mary Boone. So yeah. that was the heart of the art world at that time. In Missouri, that especially. street, yeah, it was, yes. broad, it was, it was yeah. West Broadway. So, um, and of course, I've had a studio in Sedalia all that time. I've been into my mm -hmm. studio that I'm in now. I bought my building in 1982, and it's on 110 East Main Street in Sedalia. Super. Uh, and continue to work there along with my son, Damon, who is an artist as well. And I see. we both show in a couple of galleries uh, together, which is really neat. Um, uh, Kansas City, Sherry Leedy Contemporary Art, and then in St. Louis, the Bruno David Gallery, which are uh -huh. two of Missouri's you know, really yes, elite galleries, right? Elite is a good word for it. But I show in galleries all across the country. I have a gallery in, you know, that represents my work in Miami and in Charleston and Chicago. Of course, those two galleries in Missouri, gallery in Tulsa, gallery in, in Houston. I've shown extensively in San Francisco, uh, in New York City, and Boston. So. Well, now, you was also instrumental in organizing and orchestrating the the 50, top 50 of Missouri. That's right. Uh, as an artist in Missouri, everyone knows about the top 50 in the Missouri State Fair uh, 
uh, exhibit, I yeah, guess you yeah. would call it. Exhibition, so yeah. you could fill us in briefly okay. if you can on that. Well, I was on the Arts yeah. Council in the early, the Missouri Arts Council in the early 1980s. And when I left the Arts Council, <clears throat> I went back to them about a year later and I said, hey, the, the Arts Council is really missing the boat on an opportunity to bring contemporary art to the masses in Missouri at the Missouri State Fair. And so convince them to give us some money and convince the State Fair to, to fund it as well. And they gave us the top floor in the uh, Fine Arts Building. Yes. And so I kind of was the primary creator. I had lots of people that work with me on the thing, you know, and there was always a director and a manager and that kind of thing. Right. But, yeah. um, but we brought in, you know, top flight jurors, and I did that for 35 years. I was the head of that for 35 years. And again, it's well represented. So now you can see the gentleman that put his heart and his soul into that uh, top 50 program at the Missouri State Fair at the Fine Arts Building. And it's still going. Uh, and it's still, still going. going. Yeah. I'm going I, to try to enter this yeah. year myself, a yeah. piece. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, One also, other thing I might just yeah, just interrupt yes. you a sec to say, because I'm very proud of this, is that for the last 10 years, I just, just resigned. For the last 10 years, I've been on the Mid-America Arts Alliance board. Yes. And uh -huh. as a board member, I was the chair of the Arts and Humanities, mm. and also uh, Exhibits USA and uh, Humanities on the Road, which are touring exhibitions. Yes. So that was a very exciting thing well, to be that's involved very in as well. Too. Um, and, and that's six states, you know, throughout the Midwest. States, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the Midwest area, that's uh, commendable also. Uh, you can just see by your inspiration, your, the way you talk about it, uh, your eyes little, twinkle a little bit about, you that's know, good. where we've been in life. We, <laughs> we talk about that, and it's, it's something within uh, part of our DNA after a while. So I understand exactly where you're coming from as I also reach into those older years. Well, what would you say the mission statement is of the Dom Museum of Contemporary Art? Well, the museum collects um, contemporary art, and, and we've loosely defined that as work from about 1965 to the present. But contemporary art will, will always be the work of our times. So, you know, yes, uh, uh, we have an incredible collection now of over 2,000 objects by oh some my. of the major artists in America. So that's and worth a visit. It is. And um, can you give that address again? Uh, it's on the campus of State Fair Community okay. College. And when you go into Sedalia, there's signs that will kind of direct you to the campus. All right. And then when you get to the campus, you just have to walk down this long kind of corridor that has flags of the museum on either side of it so you can't miss it. Right. Now, uh, we'd next like to have you describe some of your favorite pieces. Okay. And also, I wanted to add also that um, Mr. Freed is going to be a part of the Missouri uh, Department of Conser Conservation, runs Conservation Nature Center and Mid-Missouri Art News uh, exhibit. Uh, you can see his work face to face with the work. And um, meet uh, Doug. Uh, there at a meet to greet, meet and greet the artists. Uh, that'll be uh, May 19th between the hours of 10 and 2. So, Doug, I know we all have our favorites. So, so mm -hmm. can, can you tell us where you're at right now? With well, your what art? I've done is that I've, I have some images that, that's going to be seen on, on the background yes, on the of the program. program. But uh -huh. I, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, two, two of the images that you're showing. The first one is Gossamer, which is an ocean scene. And then the other one is lush. And both of those are pretty typical of what I've done for the last 25 years. I see. You know, I think what I'm really known for is very large scale paintings. These are both eight foot square paintings, so they're oh very my. big paintings. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my work finds its way into individual collectors, but a lot of corporate collections, that kind sure. of thing as mm -hmm. well. But uh, those two paintings are up, and you'll kind of see that they are made up of panels. There's three panels. Both of those paintings are triptychs. And, and that's what I really have done for about 25 years. But just this last year and a half, I've started doing single, paint, single panel paintings. Uh -huh. And so I've included one, uh, a painting that I just finished last week. It's called Orange Nightfall. And uh -huh. that is the really bright orange Ooh. one. 
-hmm. It's a large painting, it's four foot by six foot, but it's not as big as those eight by eight. And then I've also included a series, and it is, it is one of the series. Uh, from January of this year until now, I've been working on this series. A lot of artists work in series, yes, and I've always worked I, in series. I understand. And I've completed 13 of these paintings that are based on uh, winter snow. Ooh. And so uh, there's five plus the orange one, although it doesn't look like snow because it's orange light, but it's at nightfall, you know. I see. Uh, but there's four paintings here, and two of them will be included in the exhibition, okay. uh, number five and number eight, um, winter number five, winter number eight. And they are, are basically white paintings that, uh, you know, uh, my work is, is somewhat abstract and it's yes. somewhat expressionistic, but it certainly is recognizable. So you'll see that, and, and one thing I try to do is change it up. So, so some of the paintings are based on kind of pines or conifers or cedars. And then others are, are more deciduous trees, you know, uh, yes. but without leaves, you know, because they're winter paintings. Right. Oh, so I've been very, very busy. It's been an incredibly productive, you know, yes. several months here for me. I can't wait doing to see those, those here uh, submitted on the program as yeah. we speak. And also uh, some of the, your work um, uh, at the uh, Runge uh, coming yes. up. Uh, it sounds like almost like a... Uh, a, a, an orange sunset reflected on snow. And that's what it is. Is what I that's, picture. That's what it so is. So I can't wait to see yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Your work is always inspiring and so awesome. So I invite all our guests to please uh, write some of these dates down and, and, and do come out and visit the uh, uh, the Dom uh, Contemporary. I'd like uh, to mention my website, sure. which and is, your website, is yes. dougfree.com. Mm -hmm. And then also the uh, Dom Museum. Right. Is uh, dom is www.dommuseum.org. Super great. All right. Now, do you have uh, any special events or exhibitions at the Dom at this time? Uh, there is uh, right now is a major exhibition by Brandon Reese, who is a uh, contingent uh, structures is the name of the exhibition. Okay. And he's a ceramic sculptor from Stillwater. He's wow. uh, Oklahoma. He's on faculty of Oklahoma State University and well known in the United States, particularly throughout the Southwest. Well, again, uh, Mr. Free, Doug, uh, 15, 14 minutes is not enough to cover, but we want to invite you back on behalf of the JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, which is attempting to bring all art lovers and enthusiasts in right. Missouri together and the surrounding states even through this program. I want to thank you so much for contributing to Mid-Missouri Art News making a learning and informational experience for all. Okay. I do want to mention my son who I share yes, a studio please. with, and he's an artist too, so okay. Damon Freed, and you Damon can go Freed. to his, his website is damonfreed.com. Oh, super. Great. Thank you very much mm -hmm. again. Well, next featured here on Mid-Missouri Art News, our artist Suzanne Luther of Four Quarters Art House, Columbia, Missouri, and artist Lester Perkins of Jefferson City, Missouri. A lot of people have know of Lester and his works. That taping is scheduled for May 16th, uh, 2018. Next on uh, Spotlight on the Arts, we're turning the spotlight on two glass blowers, Gary Rice and Lance Strohecker uh, from Astral Glass in New Haven. I've gone out and uh, made a field taping of an actual glass blowing exercise, I guess we could call it, where they do turn out a beautiful beacon, which we'll display here on the program. That will be taped uh, here at the studio on April 18th as far as the interview. So I want you to please put that on your calendar and uh, tune in. Well, thank you, JCTV producer Gloria Enloe and uh, Mr. Art Gerhard for his great work as director and uh, uh, helping out in the editing room, coming up with some great uh, work. And thank you, our viewers, for watching. So look for more Mid-Missouri Art News right here on JCTV. And don't forget YouTube. I'm Rick J. Singh. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. <laughs>